Hello there, good afternoon. My name is Daramola Kayo de Babalala. They call me K Babs, they call me DKB. Um, this afternoon, I'm going to um, gist with you a little bit about directing. Um, directing is um, like building a house, you know. Um, when you want to build a house, the first thing you do is to, if someone comes to you and says, I want to build a house, you ask that person. Um, what kind of house do you want to build? Do you have a land? And then do you have a drawing, you know, a building plan? And then after that, you go, you clear the land, you do the foundation, um, you do the main structure, and then you now do the finishes, you know, the fittings and all that. Same as, um, you know, making a film. When someone comes to you and says, I want to make a film, I want you to help me direct a film. The first thing you ask that person is, what kind of film do you want to make? Because, you know, there are different genres of films and you want to know whichever that person wants to do, it will guide you in the, the framework you have to put in place. The way you shoot a thriller is not the same way you shoot a drama. The way you shoot a drama is not the same way you shoot an action film. So you have to understand the genre of film. And then the next thing you ask that person is the budget that they are working with because the budget determines a lot of things, you know, to determine the kind of equipment you're going to use, for instance, to determine um, how much you will go into production design and how much you're going to invest in production design. And so like a building, the building plan, the drawing is um, the script and then the production is um, the building that you, that, that you are constructing. And the post-production takes care of the fittings, the finishes that you put in the building. So who is a film director? A film director controls the artistic and um, technical aspects of a production. It visualizes a script and brings that script to life. It controls, it directs, it manages, it oversees the, the, the crew in bringing alive that vision that you have seen in the script. Can I come again? A director is someone who visualizes a script, you know, manages, directs the production crew in bringing out that vision that you have seen. It controls the artistic and dramatic aspects of a film project. A director must ask relevant questions. Again, the first thing is, what kind of film are we making? What genre of film are we making? Are we making an epic film? Are we making an action film? Are we making a thriller? Are we making a drama? What kind of film are we making? It will help the director to visualize the script when he understands the kind of film that he's going to make. Again, you should ask, what is the purpose? What are the objectives of this set? Uh, Projects. Is this film going to the cinema? Is it going for missions? Is it mainly a missions film that we just want to take around you know, to show in crusades and revivals and churches and all that? Is it a film going on cable TV? Is it a film going on YouTube, on social media? All these will help you in visualizing the kind of film you want to make. Someone says sometimes that he wants to make a film is is a is a blessed man, is a rich man, he wants to make a film for rich people. He wants to preach salvation to rich people. So he says he wants to play with the beauty. He wants to he wants to attract rich people. So every the production design will be so rich that everything in the film will 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 say will speak class, you know. That is how he can he believes he can reach rich people, you know. When you understand these objectives, it helps you from when you're planning to know what to plan for and how to do it. A director's job is more of a coach, a manager. He does not teach people what to do. He helps to harness it. He helps to bring out whatever they have and make it better. He makes his crew and cast better. And I'll say explain this as we go on. Therefore, you must know he must have knowledge. He must know a little about everything. He must he must know what he's doing. When he has knowledge, he's, he's able to connect with both cast and crew on an intellectual level. The work of a director is, for me, 
is in three major parts. The first one is, is work on the script. As a director, you must actually work on the script. You must read the script over and over and over and over again until it becomes part of you. You must, at the time they are working on that project, you must wake up with the script and sleep with the script. You must live in that world for that moment, for that time, for that period. You must, you must read the script hundreds of times. Every time you pick it up, when you are in that world, it helps you to understand that world and helps you to know how to visualize and bring out, you know, the, the intricate, intricate elements in that world. So the first work of the director is work on the script, is work on the script. The second one is telling the story. I said the director's work for me is in three parts. Work on the, is work on the script, then telling the story. Number three is, is work with the actors. You tell the story in so many ways, and there are many tools that help you to tell your story. The director tells the story through the camera. Like when I was talking before, I spoke about what genre of film are we making. The way you will shoot, the way your camera will work for an action film, is not the same way you will do your camera work for a drama. The way you do your drum, camera work for a drama, you will do your camera work for a thriller. So, you tell your story through shots, through the camera. Tell your story through your production design. Tell your story through the makeup, the, the costume, the sets and everything. So the director's second work is telling a story through all these elements and these tools. And the third one is his work with the actors. I will still explain more about working with actors, but you know, Actors can make or mere a film. You must ensure, and I, and I will explain that one of the most important tasks of a director is casting. When you cast adequately, it helps, it, it lessens, it reduces your job. It, when you cast appropriately, it, it reduces the stress you meet on the picture. The most important tools of a director are three. The first one is preparation. Second one is team. Number three is the person of the director. I come again. The most, for me, the most important tools of the director, there are three. The first one is preparation. I cannot overemphasize preparation. Many people rush onto location without preparing. Preparation can never be too much. Preparation, you must, you must, do your best in preparing for your role as a director and preparing for the production. Part of preparations as a director is eating the script, you know, understanding the script, being in the world of the script. Part of your preparation, part of your preparation is being able to have a solid pre-production, location recce, employing the right cast and crew, you know, Doing your best to prepare, you prepare for the production and you prepare for every scene individually. And the, the second one is employing a very, very good team. A director's job is easier if he is surrounded by a good team. In fact, I always say that a director is as good as his team. No matter how good the director is, if he does not have a good team, he's going to have so much problem in production and location. So you must employ a very, very good team. People who understand um, how you work, who understand work ethics. You see, the thing is that um, some people want to employ, for example, DOPs that we, that are not as um, on the same level as they are because they feel it will be easier for those DPs to obey them and to reverence them. I, I do not subscribe to that. I, I feel, I feel every cast and crew member must bring something to the table. And so I feel when you have a good director and a good DOP, imagine what they're going to bring out. It's going to be fantastic. But you see, when, when there are, you know, issues between DP and director, it will affect the production. When two elephants fight, the grass so down in them will suffer for it. So I would say come back to team spirit and all that. But you see, 
a director is as good as his team. He must employ a very, very, very good team to help you work. He must have a very good work ethics. Number three is the person of the director. It's an important tool in directing. And there are, when we talk about the person of the director, I'm talking about excellence. Is he a director that, that values excellence? A director that manages things and say, let's just use it like that. No. Is he a director that has knowledge? That has taken time to work and study and understand his craft. Is he a director that has a great sense of imagination? Because directing is about, film generally is about bringing something out of nothing, visualizing and, and, and bringing to life imaginary characters, bringing to life something that is otherwise non-existent. So he must have a fantastic sense of imagination. Also, he must be able to to cope with pressure. There will be pressure on set, on location. He must be able to be able to manage stress a lot. A, a lot. Again, he must be able to manage people. You know, it is said that uh, maybe a director should go for conflict resolution courses because there will be conflicts on set. And he must be able to manage people and bring out the best in them. He's going to work with people that are more experienced than him. He's going to work with people that are, that are most likely more knowledgeable than him. He's going to work with people that are older than him, richer than him, more influential than him. And he has to be able to manage egos and then deal with people personally, you know, at their level. So he must be able to have an understanding of managing people. He must be humble and always ready to learn. One thing worse than an old fool is a young fool who gives us nothing more to learn. That is always, always something to learn. So before I spoke about the director's work on the script, the director must analyze the script. He must, he must have a great understanding of the story. He must work on the structure of the film. You know, structure, a film will be boring. A film will be dull if it's not well structured. So the director's work is to see how well the screenplay writer has been able to structure the story. And it doesn't stop the director again because, you know, a script from um, the scriptwriter is um, a spec script. Then the director has to work on it and he can shooting script. And so um, one of the ways to do that is to structure the story. Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. Act 1 is like 25% of the story. Act 2 is the main body of the story, it's about 50% of the story. Act 3 is like 25% of the story, making 100%. Act 1 is the introduction, it's also called the setup. Uh, you know, the setup issues, what are we talking about? What is the subject matter of this story? Act 2 is the main conflict. Act 3 is resolution, the conclusion. I will resolve everything that has happened in the story. So the director must ensure that the story, part of his work on the story is to ensure that it is well structured. Does this film have enough um, condiments, so to speak? Is it, um, does it have enough uh, conflict to hold the um, audience spellbound? How can I make um, the beginning of the story much more interesting, you know, is will I not lose my audience on the first 10 scenes of the film? How can I make the opening more catchy, more, more interesting? Is the resolution good enough? Who are my characters? Are my characters strong enough? Do not have flat, uninteresting characters. Make sure that your characters are unforgettable. They, they have unique traits and mannerisms. That they are strong and the audience can easily remember them. Those are the things that the director has to work on when he's working on the on the story. He should visualize the story. He should close his eyes sometimes and from beginning to the end try and shoot the film in his head. Try and imagine how the story is going to be. Most importantly, he must have a short sheet. Um, if possible, you could have a storyboard. The storyboard really, really is like visualizing your story when you have storyboards. 
you know. But if you can't do a storyboard, um, you can you can draw, you can draw, you know, you know this this kind of drawings that we make. This kind of drawings that we make. Um, <coughs> excuse me, that we use to represent um, human beings. You know, if if his if his um, drawing skills are limited, you can use these and just find a way to explain shots and say, okay, this and high angle and all that. So even if he is not able to make a full storyboard, you can make it sketchy. You see, a short sheet will help a director a lot. A short sheet contains your major shots for each scene. It also helps to have an understanding of my opening shot, my closing shot for each scene. How am I starting this scene? How am I ending this scene? You see, sometimes things happen on location and then um, you're carried away. Um, you are you might not be in your hundred percent at hundred percent when you're on location, but your preparation on the script, your short sheet, short I mean S H O T short, your short sheet, and then um, the sketches you've made will quickly you know bring your imaginations to life on, on set so even if you're unable to you know gather your thoughts at some point for a particular scene the work we have done it will be easier for you to remember if you do not think do not always say i'll remember sometimes it happens and you forget your most important shots sometimes in preparation you have said in this scene i'm having only one take it's going to be a mobile shot, it's going to be creative, it's going to be development. And then you get on set, and because you didn't write it down, you might forget. You understand? So it helps to have a short sheet. It helps to have a sketch. It helps to really work on your script so much so that when you're on set, whatever the pleasure, the most important things you want to do, you do not forget. Do not have flat ordinary characters. Let there be something unique about your characters. You're going to have a madman. What differentiates your madman from every other madman on the street? What is different about your character? These are the things that etches your characters in the memory of the audience. Many years ago, I have a friend who, whose grandfather will always say, Hey, young man, you're all right. I decide. So maybe the boy does something and then they say, Grandpa, this boy does something. You won't want me. Do the way, but decide. And the man is always saying that every time to the point that sometimes the grandchildren ask him, Baba, me, do the way, but let her decide. Every time the man will always say, Do the way, but decide. If you have a character like that, the audience will not forget. There's another one that says, um, uh, Ah, you my girl. You my girl. So in Nigeria, why you in Nigeria? Why not? Ah, you my girl, you my girl. Ah, you buy some more land, no? Worry, ah, you my girl, you my girl, you my girl. He's always saying that every time. When you have a character like that, it is difficult for people to forget that character. So make your character unique. Give him a saying. Give him. Giving a look, giving something different, something in your audience will never ever forget. Now, it's something as simple as you always, you know, it's always a face camp throughout the film. It can be something as, as simple as that. It can be something as simple as you're always putting pen here throughout the film. You know, just, it might be something as simple as you're always putting comb in his ear. And you can do that throughout the film. Put, give your character something unique, something different. That will etch their memory in the heart of the audience. Have a short sheet, like I said, but you can leave a little window for creative sports. Sometimes things come to your mind. For me, I pray about directing a lot. And so the Holy Spirit speaks to me on production, on location, on set, outside what I prepared. So you would have prepared that as, as far as humanly possible, 
for the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Be open to those creative, you know, inspirations that will come. All right. Do not make hasty decisions based on challenges and realities of that moment. Do not make hasty decisions based on realities and challenges at that moment. Take time to think and process before you make any decision. Uh, otherwise, you may regret it later. Sometimes, because of circumstances, you say, let you shoot it like that, and then you get to editing, and then you almost, you, you hate yourself, you regret it, you wish you had not made that compromise. If it's, if it's going to affect the sports, it is better to postpone shooting that scene instead of compromising. If you compromise too much, it affects the production. So please be mindful of concept compromises. Because there, there, there were elements of thought invested into that idea before. Before you decided on doing it that way. So you can't just decide not to do that way again because of present realities. It will affect something like that. So do not make haste decisions based on challenges and realities of the moment. Do not make anyone, including the producer and the crew, do not make anyone stampede you into making these decisions. No. No. Do not compromise the picture you have in your mind based on present realities. I cannot stress this enough. It is very, very important. The spirit of education is extremely important. Do not allow schisms, divisions, and party spirit, backbiting, gossip, and set. Please and please, if, then, if anyone has any issue that needs clarification, ask them to come straight to the director. Do not allow for stories and schisms and all that on set. Why? There is nothing we cannot achieve if we have the same mind, the same spirit and unity. But when it comes to divisions, it, it waters down our production. So I cannot stress this enough. The spirit on location is very, very important. So always, always encourage and build a spirit of oneness, a spirit of unity, a spirit of togetherness on set. The crew members are working to actualize the vision of the director and they must never in any way work against the director or themselves. The crew is a closed unit. Therefore, we must manage each other's shortcomings. We must not expose each other's um, weaknesses. So we must work together. A football team, in a football team, one of the players may not be at optimal level. When the other members of the football team knows this, they come together to cover up for that, for that person's shortcomings. And that should happen to when we are crew members. It must not be seen that crew members are working against the success of the production or against the director or, you know, telling stories and then uh, gossiping to the producer to any other person. And those things affect the spirit of the production. Like I said, do not rush to make a decision on set and do not rush shooting a scene. You can rush preparing for that scene. But you may have to call action, no more rush. Again, you can rush all the moment leading to the time you call action. But the moment you call action, no more rush. It means you can rush preparing for a scene, but you must not rush shooting that scene. If the parameters in place do not amount to, if, 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 if everything on ground does not amount to 80% um, optimal level, do not shoot the scene. Do not compromise too much. When you compromise too much, it affects the production. Avoid sentimental casting. It is the bane of most gospel films. Avoid sentimental casting. They will say, the producer will tell you, this person is very good to administer. She's a matron. She gave us money. She gave us cars. She did this. She has to be in that film. 
if she has to be in the thing, you, you have to do about four things. Number one, reduce the number of scenes. Now, the first thing you do is audition for that person. Audition that person, you can audition on phone, you can audition physically, but make sure that you audition that person. If that person is not good enough for that role, reduce the number of scenes that you give that person. Reduce the number of speaking scenes that you give that person. You can give the dialogue to someone else that is on that scene. Reduce the number of dialogue, number of lines that the person will say. And reduce the number of shots that you give that person. You don't have to give that person so much, you know, close up. And so much see you. Just give that person a couple of medium shots just to insert and go. They can speak off shots. So reduce the number of scenes. Don't, in, in a nutshell, don't give that person so much prominence in that thing so that uh, the weakness will not be so obvious. In your work on the script as a director, make the story as lean as possible. Reduce unnecessary fat as much as possible. Um, additional, 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 additional. To this world, people don't have time for too many, too many, too many background stories, too many additional. Go straight to the point. To reduce fat as much as possible. Um, ask yourself if the story will still work if some scenes are removed. Reduce dialogue as much as possible. Show, don't tell. What, what you can show, don't say. What you can show, don't say. Show, don't tell. Reduce dialogue as much as possible. More action scenes, less dialogue scenes. Work on the flow of the story. Let each event leap up beautifully. Introduce your main characters through action, not through dialogue. As much as possible, introduce your main characters through action. And more importantly, introduce them through what you want the audience to know them for. Introduce your characters, your main characters through action. Less of dialogue through action. And more importantly, introduce them based on what you want the audience to know them for. It means the first time they're going to appear on screen, let it be as much as possible. Let them be doing what you want the audience to remember them for, what you want the audience to know them for. To do them through actions. Meet your main characters way before production starts. Do not meet them on set, no. Start working on them before production at all. You must develop a good working relationship with them before the shoot. Send them out, listen to them. Good actors will bring something to the table. They will have ideas about the character uh, itself. So, um, work with them way before, speak to them. If it's not possible to see face to face, do video call, talk to them, let them read some of their lines, you know. Help each other to bring to life those characters. In directing actors, understand that you cannot teach them how to act. You are just there to harness their potentials to help them bring to life the characters. You are just there to fan into flame their gifts. So, there should be respect go to ways. You respect your actors, your aspects. Your actors respect you. There should be mutual respect. Respect comes naturally. People know that you know what you are talking about. Knowledge breeds respect. When you are talking to your um, actors, please um, be courteous. When you talk to them, do not do not shout at them. Do not um, do not um, be disrespectful when you talk to your actors. Be courteous to them. Being courteous does not mean you lose your influence. And having influence does not mean you stop being courteous. You know, you don't teach actors how to act. You, you, you help them get better. You help them. You guide them. You know, that's the work of a coach. Explain your direction in clear terms, in clear, simple terms. Whatever you expect from your actors, explain to them in clear, simple terms. Do not be ambiguous or complex in your direction. Do not just give them a big word and say, dude, explain to them in simple terms what you want them to do. And then make your direction short. You do not, do not, do not give them long directions. 
take you step by step. Now I want you to take this phone and put it, take it from here and put it here and be looking at it. That's one direction. Another direction, I want you to look at him and just wink. Another direction, do not lump them together. Make a direction simple and easy. Don't shout at them. Don't lord it over them. Don't blame them if a sin does not work. Just smile and do what it take. Sometimes if you shout at people, if you blame people, some people psychologically they lock up. You must be able to understand each person and their temperament and be able to see how you can work to get the better out of them or the best out of them. Um, crew members deflect blame a lot. Do not deflect blame. It, sometimes some the crew is responsible for a scene not working. Maybe the cameraman is tracking and then there's a jack, there's a there's a the, the 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 movement of the track is not smooth. Instead of saying, "Yeah, we are the one responsible. Let's do the tape," you might some people will deflect and blame the actor and, and talk about what the actor did wrong. Instead of so, do not deflect blames. Even if a, a scene is not working, even if the actor is responsible for it, just smile and do a take. Prepare a lot for a scene, but as much as possible, reduce reactions. Sometimes people would have given their best reactions in reactions, and then when you now call action, they start acting. And acting is such that you don't, you have to also act. I don't know, that's a little bit ambiguous. What it means is that um, you want truthful, sincere reactions in your actors. That's why I do not like when some actors, many, many established actors do this a lot. They will say, are you on me? Are you on me? So that they can do close-up. Uh, when they know that it's close-up, they now have just and now try to do it better. In that place, they are acting. The reaction is not as sincere and truthful as it should be. So, like I said, do not um, blame your actors on set for issues that happen behind the scene. A light bulb goes off you blame the actor um, and the continuity man forgets that a, con a costume or a hearing has continued to another scene. Blame the actor. Why don't you do now to, you know, it is the work of the continuity man, do not blame the actor. Like I said, do not rehearse too much, as much as possible. Um, I'd like actors to give truthful, real um, reactions, you know. Um, sometimes too much reasons affect the real, the real deal. Um, do not allow your actors to act when they are hungry, when they are hungry, when they are tired, when they are spent, or disturbed, or tensed. Except it can help the scene. Except you actually want them to be tired in the scene. But if not, um, do not allow them to hurt when they cannot give their best. Some of them will insist they want to shoot because they want to go back home. Do not allow it. Because when you get to the editing suit and you are looking, watching the film, watching the, the rushes, you feel sad because the reaction is not... Even you, the director, as much as possible, the atmosphere should not be a tense one. So when the atmosphere is tense and people are hungry, hungry or whatever, or disturbed, Please, if you notice a drop in your actor's um, um, performance, you call them to a side and try to understand what is wrong with them. Do not just continue shooting, so you can get the best from them. Maintain a high level of discipline on set. Do not allow unnecessary jokes, silly comments and all that. Sometimes you want your actor to internalize and bring out, bring out deep emotions. But uh, when the atmosphere is full of jokes and people are passing silly comments, even crew members and all that, it's not allow for a deep expression of um, feelings. So maintain a high level of discipline. There will be time to joke and maybe when you're taking lunch and or maybe you just want them to lose up and all that. But generally maintain a high level of discipline on set so that when you want to get something deep and emotional from your actors. Joking or playing will not take your actors out of the zone. Give your actors creative license, but with a measure of control. Do not um, 
some people people dressing is in different ways. Some people just give their actors a log line and then um, want them to improvise. Some want them to follow the letter of the script like that in total. But whatever it is, give your actors some creative license. Um, some some people might take their life a little bit slower because that's how they felt at that time. Do not and then that's sometimes the commitment will not jump in thinking they forgot their lines. When in actual fact they didn't forget their lines. They are just trying to bring out that emotion. So give your actors some measure of creative license. Do not rush your actors. Do, do not rush your actors. Do not, in fact, do not rush any part of your production. Like I said, you can rush preparation, but do not rush shooting. Do not rush your actors. Well-trained actors have a way of name when they have not given a good performance, so to speak. Um, if that is so, if you, if you agree with them, give them a chance to redo the scene. And if they have done well, speak to them and assure them that you have a good take. Casting is about appropriateness. Yes, she's beautiful, but is she appropriate for that role? It's, um, it's about being appropriate for a particular role. When you talk to your actors, do not bring up other actors. Do not, nobody likes to be compared to any other person. Do not say, act like or be like. No, 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 no. You know, act like a certain actor, be like a certain actor. Can't you cry like a certain actor? Can't you act this way? Like, ah, like by that carry long. Can you no phone in No, no. Nobody likes to be compared to another person. So, because if you do that, you are not inspiring them, you are insulting them. So do not bring up other actors when you talk to your actors. Create a positive environment. Create a, let the environment, let the working environment be interesting and exciting. Let the atmosphere be a positive one. Communication is key. Like I said, talk to your actors in simple, clear words. Communicate to them. If you're not doing a role, a particular scene very well as much as you want talk to them call them to a side do not do not correct them openly do not shout i said at the other time i said no 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 call them to a side and try to speak to them and communicate to them um everything matters if you bring up an issue with this if, if your actors bring up an issue um do not just shrug it off and say that I'm, I'm doing it my way no Listen to them and try to see whether what they say makes sense or not. Like I said, keep your direction clear and concise. Talk to them in simple terms. Again, speak, encourage your actors. Encourage your actors. If they have done a scene well, encourage them. Tell them what they are doing well. Tell them what they are not doing well, how they can improve. Every actor will love a director who, after they have worked with that person on a film project, they left to build a better actor. So it means, as you talk to them, you encourage them, you talk to them positively about the ones, about the things they did well, and then you also explain to them how they can improve, how they can tell better. Like I said, never tell your actors how to act. Just guide them. Just coach them, help them to get better. Like I said, use short sentences to direct your actors. Let them take each action step by step, you know, little by little. Conclusively, a good director does not play with production design. Production design helps the director to bring out his vision of a story. A good director does not play with production design. If, as much as possible, Pay more attention on your story and your production design. It is extremely important. And production design takes care of makeup, costume, props, set design. You know, it's extremely important. This is not conclusive. This is not um, all that there is to directing. There are lots and lots and lots and lots of other things that has to do with directing. There are we didn't talk about blocking, we didn't talk about um, shots, we didn't talk about lots of things. But the thing is, 
no one can teach and no one can know directing in one half. Um, the purpose of this um, short um, lecture is just to open your eyes to a little bit of the world of directing. And there are still lots and lots of things to, to learn and to know about. But I hope that this um, short time has been inspiring and um, you've been able to get one or two things from everything I've spoken about. My name is Tanamola Tayo de Papalala. God bless you.